Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, today I'm going to give you a look through our summer garden. We're about halfway through summer here in Australia at the moment and the garden's really taking off as you can see with this giant pumpkin plant behind me which we've got growing on a recycled mattress frame. So come with me and we'll have a look through the garden. What? Do you want to come in? Oh, Oscar. Do you want to come in? Do you want to come into the garden? Oh, okay. All right, we'll let you in. Are you a good boy? Oh, you're such a good boy. Aren't you? That pumpkin there over in the corner, that's a Turk's turban. I grow those every year. They're a beautiful ornamental pumpkin. They can get really colourful and stripy and that one looks like it may have crossed with something. I'm not sure so I'll just have to wait and see how that goes but they're delicious to eat as well. And this big one trailing up here, we've got it trailing up a repurposed mattress frame. Now Tim took all the fabric and the wadding and everything off this mattress and he attached it to the side of the shed and these make beautiful garden art and you can see there that the pumpkin is just trailed right up the whole shed. That one is a Queensland blue I think it is but there's nothing much happening on it but I can see a bee there now on the flowers so hopefully something will happen and we'll get some fruit going on that one. I'm just looking through in here and on the other side of the fence that's a Queensland blue pumpkin there so there is one on the vine. It's a massive vine but that pumpkin looks absolutely huge too so again we might have to give that some support just string it up with some old pantyhose or some netting something like that just so that it doesn't bust off the vine considering that it's hanging in midair. What a beauty that sunflower is absolutely gorgeous and down here we have the nasturtiums. I always make sure that I plant plenty of flowers in and around the garden for the bees. All right, this is the Turk's Turban pumpkin here and I'm just having a look at it and I don't know if you can see in there but it's actually got a bit of water sitting around the stem there and also the stem looks to have had a bit of um, damage to it there. So I think we might have to pick this one. I don't think I'll bother about stringing that up. It's it's quite huge. If you can see my hand here, it's quite a big pumpkin. So I think I'll just pick that one and leave it in the sun to ripen. Some of our cute little green patty pan squash. They're shaped like little UFOs. They're beautiful. They're just like a zucchini. You can use those like a zucchini or you can roast them up with some butter and garlic. Absolutely beautiful. This is our dahlia patch. This is the one out the back and you can see here that some of the plants are more advanced than others. These two burgundy ones which are called Nugget, they were uh, had some spare tubers left in the ground by mistake. We dug up everything, thought we'd got it all but these ones stayed in and they overwintered and they were the first ones to flower and they're just completely prolific. They're, they're just beautiful so it was nice to have those a bit earlier than the rest of the dahlias. We've also got a watermelon growing there. That's looking, I've got no idea what that variety is but um, I'm, I'll have a look at that later and see how close that is to picking. In here we've got some baby butternut pumpkins growing and they've come on really well this year. We've had a lot that have been pollinated so they're uh, I think we're going to get a good crop from those. Some more little butternut pumpkins there growing they're actually hanging outside of the fence. That one there's hanging inside. But there's quite a few on that bush. Oh, there's another one outside there. 
So we've just tried to utilize all of our space here and we've been growing along the fence here. Plenty more in here too. They look like they've possibly crossed with something. They've got some stripes on them so I'm just not sure what's going on there or if they will ripen up into something not with stripes on them. The trouble is when you've got so many things, veggies growing from the same family all together, uh, they can get cross-pollinated. We've got a couple of big massive rosemaries here. We planted those, they were just tiny little plants when we put them in, but the bees love the rosemary flowers, so that's why we've got those in here. These are our wild, free range and crazy berries. We've got these growing along an old wire fence and they certainly have taken off and I've been collecting the berries off them, the ones that I can get from the birds and I save those and put them in the freezer so that when I've got enough I can make something with them. But yeah, they're doing really well. This is our very old plum tree here. It um, has done really well this year, which um, for some reason our other fruit trees didn't, but this plum tree is actually loaded this year. But we're having a lot of trouble with birds and fruit bats attacking the fruit and knocking it to the ground. So we've been able to pick as much as we can down lower. And now this lot that's on the tree now is, is ripening as we speak. So we'll have to get in there and pick that, try and save it from the birds. This is a better view of all the plums on the tree. Look at those. But all the plums from up the top pretty much are gone from the cockatoos and the fruit bat that decides to come and fly and chew on them every night here. But there's plenty for all of us. So there's still stacks there, look at those. And I just wanted to show you all of the plums that are on the ground. We're dealing with these. We started picking them up at the start and then in the end they just get too many. The birds and the bats, they just chew them off and they all fall on the ground and decompose. So they're actually like really good uh, for the soil. But what happens is, I'll just zoom in here. You can see there that there's a little one growing. This whole area just pops up with little plum tree seedlings and there's actually a few around here in the paddock next door and um, that have just grown from the plums that have fallen on the ground and they actually produce fruit. So I've had a few of these little plants, so I've put them out onto the roadside stall and I've also um, got a few in pots so that I can plant them in other areas of the garden as well and we'll have a lot more fruit trees. And I'd just like to give a big thank you to Cynthia Johnson from Cynthia's Crafts and More. Cynthia gave me a very generous donation via my Buy Me A Coffee page and that's going to go towards buying a fruit tree. So thank you so much Cynthia, I really appreciate it. it. It just, it means the world to me and it really helps us out here on the homestead. So thank you again. Beautiful purple evening mist dahlia. Well, it's more a pretty mauve color. Just about to bloom. The rhubarb is finally starting to come on. I grew these from seed and they've taken me a couple of years. I bought them here in tiny little pots from when we were in at the caravan. They just pretty much stayed dormant in the pots until I got them in the ground and now that um, they're in the ground they've really taken off. These are our potatoes in this area here and we've also got them growing right up pretty much up that whole aisle there so they're coming on really good we've dug a few and they've been lovely and they're just starting to die off now so I think a lot of those will be ready for picking and then I can plant something else in that area 
as I come through here I can see these potatoes here this is what the birds are doing they're digging up the potatoes so I'll just have to cover those over here's another example of what the birds do they dig the straw off the potatoes and you can see here this potato the part that's exposed goes green and it actually gets sunburnt this time of the year so it's really important to cover those back up and yeah keep the sun and the birds off them because when they're exposed and they go that color they're actually no good to eat they can be quite poisonous quite toxic so don't eat any green potatoes peoples and don't feed them to your animals either look at this this little potato just sitting here by itself I'll have to grab that one they're not getting that these are my seedling dahlias along here I've just made a spot for them they're ones that I grew from seed and I've been carrying them around in pots for a couple of years and I have finally got them in the ground so I'm pretty excited about that there's quite a few varieties there that uh, will be interesting to see what we get from those just a few bush beans in there we didn't have many plants this year but they are quite a prolific producer so they're a good one to have bush beans and you can grow them in a pot too some beautiful flat leaf Italian parsley there that's my favorite for flavor to put in cooking and very easy to grow and once you've got that, if you let it go to seed, you'll always have it. These are our strawberries. Putting the net on them this season has been an absolute game changer for um, getting so much fruit. The birds and the bugs and the bees were taking them, pretty much all of them. And now we're just getting every one. And we've had so many, they've just been beautiful. So down here, I've got the runners and I'm just letting them run and plant in the ground because I'm going to dig those up and keep them. I have got another video that I did a couple of years ago which I'll link below which shows you how to make your own free strawberry plants. We love free so what I'm going to do is then plant another row down the side here so that we get double the amount next year. This is our zucchini area and we've got plenty of those different varieties and we've also got them along the fence there and we've got them in front of the bed frames. So we've got a few different varieties. I normally do Cocazelle, Black Beauty and Rondo Denise which is the round ball zucchini. They're really nice. You can actually scoop out the center and stuff those with meat and cheese or other vegetables, breadcrumbs, pasta sauce, all that sort of thing. They're lovely. Over in this part of the garden, I've just got some, I think they're turnips or they could be Swedes. I'm not sure. Might be a mixture. Um, they're looking pretty sad. They've got a bit of uh, mold mildew looking on the top of them so I'll have to uh, trim those back and see if I can salvage those and here this is pink celery which I've let go to seed I always try to leave maybe one of everything go to seed so that that way I've got some seed for next season but uh, anyone who lets celery goes to seed would know the volume of seeds that you get from them. So this is where our tomato plants are at this stage. This year I decided not to plant very many. We don't eat a lot of tomatoes but we do eat them raw on sandwiches so I just planted I don't know maybe half a dozen this year. So hopefully we'll get some fruit. I can see some flowers there. I just spotted a tomato there so we're going to have at least one I can see it hiding in there um, here we've got the tomato plant tethered to an old gate we've got this gate that we have here in the garden and we use it to grow things on 
here I've got I'll just step back a bit I've got sweet peas I had the most beautiful display of sweet peas I'll put a picture in to show you what they actually looked like at the height of their beauty and I've been collecting the seed pods off here see here here's one these have actually all opened and they pop open and drop their seeds out on the ground so I will have sweet peas here again next year no doubt look at these I need to quickly get these and collect those so that'll be my job after I finish filming here as I was walking back around through here I've just noticed those little tomatoes in there they're baby Roma tomatoes so that's exciting too that's some beetroot plants there that we've got under a cage. We had a lot of trouble with the blackbirds digging these up when we put them in small. So we've given them a bit of protection and they've done really well. So the key here to our garden, to having success, is to actually cover things up. Because we've got blackbirds that live here in this mirror bush. They're nesting in there and I think there's two or three nests and their babies just come out and they're digging right through the garden. They love the straw that we've got down and it's a bit of a nuisance but if we can cover up our stuff then it's not so bad. We've got a couple of kales here that I've been letting go to seed. This one here that went to seed I've already collected the seed off it that's a red frilly kale and that's coming back really nicely so got a bit of a head start on the autumn and winter veg this is the rondo denise zucchini which is a round ball but this looks suspiciously like it's going to be elongated so i would say that that's been cross-pollinated with another zucchini these are our lettuce these are the Great Lakes lettuce and they're the ones that I grow every year from my own seed and they're amazing they have such a tight head on them that you get so much lettuce these all need to be picked I try and do a succession planting of the lettuce because um, you know you can't there's only so much lettuce you can eat now over the back near that little windmill there you can see that there's a row of younger lettuces that's our second succession of lettuce there coming along very nicely there's another rosemary plant we put the rosemary everywhere like I said before because it, it brings the bees and it really helps with the pollination this is a variegated sage and what I'd hope to do is for these things to spread really wide along here under the trees so that that way I don't have to keep weeding we've got a terrible problem here with that cooch grass and it's just feral and it comes in from next door under the fence as well there's a comfrey so what I hope to do is to plant, is to divide all this up and put them underneath here so that um, we can get rid of all the weeding that I have to do here. We did put straw down but it wasn't that successful. Uh, the weeds still come up from underneath it and down in this corner the comfrey here is absolutely huge. I've got a lemon balm down there and another comfrey and this whole corner here has no weeds because these plants have just uh, blocked out the the sun they can't get any and um, yeah they're, they're doing really well so I'd like to do that right along here there's another sage in there but it's getting pretty much choked out by all that grass so this is another area that I have to weed as well we thought we weren't going to have a lot of weeds this year, but uh, we seem to be inundated again. I have beautiful memories of locust trees from when I was a child, of eating them till we just about made ourselves sick. 
they had uh, a hedge in one place that we lived made out of locust trees so we had them everywhere and we just used to eat them all the time so I'm looking forward to getting fruit off that and reliving my childhood memories. Down our driveway I've got all the dahlias planted. Last year I had sunflowers down here but this year I needed the space for dahlias so as these start to bloom I'll be doing some videos on those and showing you what the varieties are and how they look like. So for all you dahlia lovers, that's something to look forward to. And this is one of my elder trees. That again was a little plant that we planted in here and it's just absolutely taken off. Now this one, it doesn't actually produce berries. I think um, it's a sterile one that they grow at the nurseries that don't actually produce the berries but it's got plenty of flowers, so they look beautiful in flower arrangements or you can also make elderflower cordial or elderflower champagne, elderflower syrup, jam, all those sorts of things. Just a quick peek into one of the hothouses. These are a few little things that I've got growing. I've been run off my feet with selling all my seedlings on the roadside stand and I can hardly keep up which is a good thing but um, I'm so busy doing everything else that at times it can be really difficult. Down here these are some gladioli corms that I've got growing. They take a couple of years to come to maturity before you get a flower. They're just the little cormlets that I collected off the side of my gladys from last year so I'm just going to keep those growing and I'll put those into some pots and they probably will flower next year hopefully. Just a quick look at a couple of the beautiful dahlias that I've got growing in the front yard here that are blooming. That one is beautiful, that's Briannon. This is a marshmallow hibiscus, it's also known as Rose of Sharon. Absolutely beautiful. This got attacked last year by scale and an ants and it was really really bad and we cut it back to basically just the stump and this year we've been rewarded with the most beautiful flowers and look at all those buds on there just waiting to come open into flower but it's just so beautiful it is really such a pretty flower I just wanted to show you this old beautiful old kitchen dresser that um, a lady gave to us. She is renovating her kitchen and she had this, oh, she's got some beautiful furniture that she's actually given to us and I'll just show you here. The fruit bat has already, already done a poo on that so we'll have to get in and clean that. So we're trying to do a bit of tidying up here so that we can get this in under cover because when we looked at it, it just it needs a bit of work. I'll just show you down here. It's actually got a borer in it. So they look to be still pretty active. So we've got to disassemble some of these pieces and get rid of them and treat the rest of the wood before we can do anything and also we got another piece if I can just do this one handed and move that that is a beautiful looking piece uh, she said that that came from Spencer Street Station when they did the remodel there so she bought it off a lady over the other side of the peninsula and um, on the back of it it's still got some smoke stains from the locomotives from the old locomotives in the in the train station so we've got some beautiful pieces of furniture that we have to do some work on and we'll be putting those in the kitchen when we get around to painting it so guys i hope you really enjoyed the garden tour today thank you again so much for watching and i'll see you next time Bye!